In this video, we will walk through how to create a time-enabled feature service and layer using the Pi Integrator for Esri ArcGIS. This will allow us to expose historical Pi system data to the ArcGIS platform. I have already made sure that my Pi Integrator for Esri ArcGIS and the ArcGIS platform are properly configured. Additionally, my Pi Asset Framework is ready too. This was shown in previous videos. I want to bring these maintenance vehicle assets and their attributes into the ArcGIS platform as point geometries. Note the assets have some metadata, location information, and live Pi tag data. To start, I will go to the integrator configuration portal. First thing I want to do is create a service. I'll give it a name and description. I will use the same name as my AF database. Next, we want to hit create a layer. We'll give the layer a name and description as well. Here, we want to ensure that the time enabled feature layer option is selected. The integrator also allows configuration of real time layers by connecting through the ArcGIS GeoVent server. It is important to note that the time enabled feature layers are hosted by the integrator and not on the ArcGIS platform. This is why we need to log into an ArcGIS platform to create an item for the feature layer that can then be used for authentication and content management. In this example, I want to connect to ArcGIS Online, so I will select the ArcGIS Online button and enter in my credentials. Once that is authenticated, I can continue to the next step. Now we need to configure the data source. We want to select the AF server and AF database. We'll select the Pugwell database. And the template I'm interested in is the maintenance vehicle asset template. I can additionally choose a specific category, how many maximum elements I wish to return, as well as the search route in the AF hierarchy. I can preview my results of the assets returned here. We we'll continue to go on to the next step. In the next page, we're going to configure the template attribute fields. These are my element attributes, as well as some asset information we wish to bring into the ArcGIS platform. I'm interested in bringing all of my attributes, so I will leave them all checked. There's some additional information we need. Since we are bringing in point geometry, and the location information for my assets are already in Pi, we can select X and Y for the longitude and latitude respectively. Because the attribute names are already named Latitude and Longitude, the integrator will automatically recognize and select the correct geometry field. The last function choice we need to specify is a unique key. I know my elements are uniquely named, so I can select the element name as the function key. We'll continue to go into the last step. Here my geometry type is point because we've selected x and y coordinates. For the spatial reference, I have available a list of thousands of coordinate systems to choose from. I know my coordinate information is using the default of WGS 1984. You can also search for spatial references in the provided search box, or ask your ArcGIS admin if you are not sure which spatial reference to use. To finish the layer creation, we'll hit Create Layer. Now we're taken back to the layer information page. The green check mark and banner at the top of the page indicates the integrator has finished initializing the layer. We can immediately jump to view the item in ArcGIS as well as open the layer in a new map view by selecting the two buttons at the top right. We're going to open this layer in a new map by clicking View in Map Viewer.
we'll sign into our ArcGIS Online account. We'll need to sign in again as the ArcGIS user who created this layer in order to view the data hosted by the Pi Integrator. The location of our integrator is indicated in the pop-up window. Now we can see that the assets are being plotted on the map, and we can zoom in to better visualize them. I want to change how the symbols are displayed on the map, so I will hit Change Style, then I'll select Options for the Location Symbol, select Symbols, and in the drop-down for Shapes, we can select Transportation, and I'll choose a picture of a truck. I also want to increase the symbol size to better visualize them. We'll hit OK. OK again, and done. Notice the time slider at the bottom of the map. This time slider will automatically be enabled for time-enabled layers created from the Pi Integrator. We can hit play to visualize the assets moving over time. To change additional time options, select Configure. Here we can adjust the playback speed, as well as additional advanced options. We can configure the start and end time, as well as the time interval. In this example, I'm interested in the data from October 23rd, 5 p.m to October 23rd, 6 p.m. And I'm still interested in one minute data. We'll press OK to update the time configuration. Notice that now when I hit play, the assets are being displayed with the updated start and end times. We can also drag this time slider around to view data. Note that the integrator will use interpolated data at the end time of the time interval. If we want to change the time slider to use a single time, we can go again to configure, show advanced options, and change the option to progressively display all data. Note now there is one slider for the time. To view attribute data, we can click on an asset to open a pop-up. Here we can see the integrator is passing Pi system data. You can additionally configure a link to Pi Vision from this pop-up to instantly open an ad hoc trend and view Pi system data. And with that, we have configured a time-enabled feature layer so that the Pi integrator for Esri ArcGIS can deliver historical Pi system data to the ArcGIS platform.